Hey everyone, this is Scott Volker and in today's video I'm going to walk you through the process on how to create a high key image. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is this image right here was sent to me probably around almost a month ago and um, she was wondering, one of our NPB students was wondering how she can get the background to be completely white without having to go and spend all of the money on professional lighting. Now I would say in the future if you are going to be doing a lot of these you're gonna probably want to go and invest in some lighting. We're not gonna go into that today but you can achieve these results without having the high-end lighting and I'm gonna show you how to do that today in this simple process. But let me just show you the image that I worked for her and that I showed her and that's this one right here. And you can see I basically blew the background out but I preserved her and I also warmed up the skin tone and I also added some catch lights and I'm going to show you how I did all of those things and uh, I just wanted to show you though and point out what we did here let me just pull that other image up real quick again and you can see the difference this here is a flat image it doesn't have a lot of contrast to it the catch lights are very very small let me just pull that up very very small there's not much there at all and the background is a little wrinkly and uh, she wanted that to be completely blown out and the skin tone is a little flat so that's what we did we just did all of those things I just discussed so let me show you what we're gonna do today what we're gonna do today is another image that she wanted me to work on which was this one right here which was from the same shoot and I'm gonna try to match them as closely as possible so let's get started the first step that we're gonna do is go to the background layer right here we're gonna double click on it and we're gonna duplicate that layer okay and there we go now we have a top layer and you can do this using masks but I'm not gonna get into that today I don't really use masks that much this is how I do my own masks it's my own way it's I don't it's probably the wrong way to do it but again in Photoshop there's really not a right or wrong way of doing things it's whatever works for you and this works really well for me so here's here's what we're gonna do next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into the adjustments and we're gonna go into the uh, levels first and we're gonna see how we're how we're looking for the levels and it looks like everything is pretty good from this end to this end now if there was a space here before the spikes I would probably bring the slider in a little bit okay but in this case it's pretty good okay so what we're gonna do is we are gonna go into the curves and we're gonna find it right there and we're gonna go ahead and we are going to bring this thing way up until we do blow that background out okay something we'll start bringing it in until we start seeing a little bit of it uh, maybe a little bit more in there that looks pretty good not really but it's gonna look pretty good okay so if I turn that off now you can see we haven't harmed the image underneath but we did blow the background out so now what I'm gonna do is just grab the eraser tool which is over here let me zoom in on that if you don't know where that is right over there just underneath the clone tool now depending on what version you're working in it could be different okay I'm gonna go ahead and grab a soft brush what I mean by that is the hardness is gonna be all the way to zero and the diameter you wanna probably bring that down a little bit as well and um, actually I'm gonna bring it up because I wanna start off large and then I'll bring it around and you're gonna see we're gonna start bringing the um, underlining image now you can see the skin kinda looks a little bit gray but we're gonna fix that and that's what I meant by the image being flat so just follow that around okay don't go all the way out to the edge yet because what you're doing is with that soft edge it's almost spraying out there so we don't want to go out too far because we don't want to start showing the old background there we want to keep it where it's soft and if you ever notice on a high key image on a uh, white high key image you can almost see the glow around the hair and that's really um, what we're doing here we don't want to cut it out a hundred percent okay or we don't want to erase a hundred percent of it and again down here we want to erase some of this too so we can start seeing some of that texture again now a little tip for that let me keep working this around bear with me I don't want to skip anything I want to show you every detail that I'm doing here okay and then what we're gonna to wanna to do is go up here to the opacity. I had it at 57%. That's another thing I wanna point out. Let me just zoom in on that. We had a 57%, and that's just because I didn't wanna go directly through. I wanted it to be uh, just a little bit transparent. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm just using the bracket keys on that. And then what I'm gonna do is just start to go over down here on the lower portion. Now, I'm not gonna worry about too far down below because I'm gonna crop this image in as well. So we're, we're looking pretty good, okay? 
I'm going to keep going here just a little bit on the face. And once you do this a few times, you're going to see that it's going to be real easy the more you do it. It's like anything, the more you practice, the easier it gets. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then we're going to go back to our pointer. And we're going to go ahead and warm that skin tone up. So I want to go to that bottom layer. And all I'm going to do here really is go into my hue and saturation and my um, lightness sliders here. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the saturation and bring it up just a little bit. Just to add a little bit of warmth to her face. And you can use contrast if you want to. You can do any, any of those options. Um, in this case, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we just warmed up her skin tone. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put those catch lights in. So I want to create a new layer. And then I want to go to my paintbrush tool, which is right here. Okay, brush tool. And then I'm going to, let's go with 30 and see what that gives us. That looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on this. Okay, I'm just going to slide this over so you can see what I'm doing. And you can almost see the catch lights there. So we're just going to lightly... With one click, go like that, and go like that. Now, if you think they're too soft, you can just make the edge a little bit harder. Go right here and make the edge a little bit harder. That's all. This is about 11%. I'm, I'm okay with that because if we pull that back, that's what we're looking like. Now, they may be a little bit big. And the reason why I put them on their own layer is because I can turn them on and off now. Okay. So, let's go ahead and just erase them. This is how easy it it can be here. Just go ahead and just quickly erase them. My opacity up a little bit. Okay. And then let's go back to the paintbrush and make it a little bit harder. I'm gonna bring it up to like 27%. And I might make my brush size a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna go right to that spot. There. And there. It looks sharper already just by adding those catch lights. I think that's perfect. Okay. So I'm liking the way that's looking. I'm going to go ahead and hit layer, flatten image, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop that image. And an easy way to do this is to just go ahead and go to your crop tool. I already have this set. 300 uh, DPI is my resolution, 8 inches wide by 10 inches high. And if that's the size that I wanted to do it, um, that's what I could do. And I just, oops, and there's a mistake for you. There, <laughs> okay. So let's go back to the crop tool, and we want to change that from the width to be 8 and the height to be 10. See, even I make mistakes. So there we go. Spring that out to wherever you want it. Okay, and just hit return or enter. And there is your picture. And then sometimes you may notice a shadow um, in the back where the the one main light was hitting. Uh, and sometimes it's okay to leave that because it gives it a sense of grounding because this way here it's not totally blown out. Um, but if you did want to get rid of that or at least soften it, you could just use the dodge and burn tool, which is located in the tool palette as well. And um, just go to dodge, go up to shadows, and I'm going to use 25% as an exposure. And then just lightly go over that area and you'll see that it will lighten it. The other thing you can do is follow around the hair very lightly, not even really touching the hair because it'll spray. And then you can soften out the edge of the hair, almost giving it a halo effect. And a lot of times with a high key uh, shot with a, with a white background, you'll get a little bit of light spill coming off of the background, hitting the subject from behind. And that gives it a nice look as well. So that's it. That's pretty much all you need to do to create a high key image on a white background, even if you didn't shoot it with the high end lighting system. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you later.